Hey everybody, Mike here. So I got what I call a pretty simple basic garage slab we're doing here today. Now I'm gonna show you how we put the forms up on this, how we set the forms to grade, and then how we pour it and get the concrete in here. So this is what I call a, a two car garage slab. It's 30 by 24. It's gonna be a six inch thick slab. So it's gonna average about six inches you know there'll be spots there's always spots around five and a half there's spots six and a half but on average the thickness is going to be right around six inches now i don't do the subgrade here i don't do the gravel so these people they just hire me to come in here and do the concrete slab and so when i show up the gravel is what it is this is what it looks like and it was pretty good when i checked it with the laser the gravel was within about an inch so that's not too too bad now, whenever I do a concrete slab, the first thing we do is all, we always get the forms laid out. What we need for forms is, we're just using two by sixes here today. Again, these are, I know they're five and a half inches, but if we have to hang them up off the ground a little bit to get our six inches, it's no big deal. We'll just pull in some dirt behind them to backfill them with. But we're gonna get them laid out 30 feet right across the front there where the laser is and 24 feet deep. So we'll get them screwed together. Oh, we usually we usually make the forms a little longer than we need and then we can overhang one edge a little bit you can see that front edge on the left how it's kind of overhanging the board a little bit so then we can just measure out our lengths and make them whatever we need so we're gonna get the we'll start with one corner and then we measure around the slab and, and mark the boards to the exact length we need and then we can screw them right to that mark and that gets us started. So at least that gets the frame the, the right dimensions. And then from there, once we get the frame the right dimensions, we we kind of try to put it in place where the homeowner wants it. Now he had some stakes in the ground. So we get the corners of the slab, once it's framed, as close to those stakes as we can. And then we square it. So we go diagonal with the tape, corner to corner, when we square, and that what that does is it makes sure the slab is perfectly square when we get the exact same number from each diagonal. So we'll just keep moving the slab around, tweaking it a little bit until we get the right diagonal. Then once we get the diagonal in, in the slab squared, you know, we'll put our pins in to hold the forms. And we usually do the four corners first. So we'll get all the pins in. Then I'm, I got my self-leveling laser here, that Topcon RLH5B. And what I'm doing right now is I'm just getting an average of the dirt grade. I'm shooting the dirt. I've got a ruler on that grade stick, so it gives me some numbers to go by. And then I can just, from there, I can move my receiver six inches to where I want the top of the forms. And then we'll just use the laser to screw the forms right to grade. So, hey, if you guys don't know me, my name's Mike Day. I specialize in all kinds of concrete flat work. So if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, you know, go ahead down there and hit subscribe now. Hit the little bell notification. I come out with a couple videos a week, usually Mondays and Fridays, about all different types of concrete flat work. And if you guys are finding value, please smash that like button. You know, that like button will help me with the YouTube algorithm and it'll rank my videos a little bit better so more people will get to see these things. Also, you know, down in the comments, let me know, are you thinking of doing your own slab? Let me know down in the comments and what else would you need to know to be able to do your own slab. If I got a really detailed course down in the description in the notes below of the video and it takes you through step by step everything you need to know to do a slab like this. You know, the, it, it's a video course. I break down each step. Make sure you have all the right materials, all the right tools. Um, I teach you how to order the concrete, how much concrete to order, how to pour it, how to finish it. So if that's what you're thinking of, of doing your own slab, that course would be definitely the thing you should get. So now we got the slab all set up. we got our wire mesh put in. I don't have any slab bolsters today. The, you know, with the, the shipping across the country, the, the wire mesh, the rebar and stuff has been really tough to get lately, so I don't have any slab bolsters. So I'm just using my wire puller, see it right there? I'm pulling that wire up as we're pouring the concrete. And I also got fiber mesh in the concrete. So we're using a 3000 PSI concrete with fiber mesh. And then I also got the wire in it. So once I pull that wire up, 
and you get concrete under it, it doesn't go all the way back down to the bottom. The aggregate, the stone, the rocks, and the concrete hold it up off the bottom. So it does do some good in there. And then we're putting a double row of rebar around the edges too. I'll, we'll wet set those in. So once we get some concrete around the edges, we'll drop in that rebar. And make sure it's about two inches from the surface. So I'm setting my, my grades in the middle of the slab right now using the laser. We call these wet pads. So the, the grade, the receiver, and the grade stick are set to the top of the forms. And then I just shoot a wet pad. I mag float it. And then we screed off that wet pad like Darren's doing right now. And I'm screeding over there on the other side off the top of the form. And then that gives us that gives us what we're going to go by when we use the Viber Screed here. Now we're using MBW Screed Demon Viber Screed. It's got a 12 foot board on it. This thing's really, really light. It's really easy to use. And it, it vibrates the concrete level. As long as you've got two good guys behind you raking, you know, I got Luke there and Eric, keeping the concrete at the right level, you know, behind the Viber Screed, this thing's really easy to use. So, if, you know, if you're looking, if you're in the market for a Viber Screed, I'd definitely recommend getting that one. I'll have a link for that down in the description too, guys, so you can check it out. So now what we're doing is we're just getting more concrete poured out. We got we had some leftover from a the, we already poured a floor this morning first, real real early, and then that first truck we were using had a little left leftover concrete on it. So we dumped that concrete in there to get rid of him, and now we're onto the the truck that's going to finish this slab. So we got this truck all set up and ready to go. You can see me over there. I'm pulling that wire up on the edge as we're pouring the concrete. Luke and Erica pouring the concrete out. Darren's magging the edges. You see, this is the driver from that first truck. He's all empty and washed out and ready to go. This this sole slab took about 13 yards of concrete. Again, it was 30 by 24, averaged about six inches. And we're using a, a regular 3,000 PSI. Now the homeowner is going to build this garage himself too. I don't know if it's going to be like a really big shed or if it's going to just be a two car garage or what it is really. But they're going to build it themselves. So they're trying to do as much as they can. They just didn't dare tackle the concrete part of it. So we try it when we pour, you know, because we pour every day, we try to get quite a bit of concrete poured out before we start screeding stuff. You can see T is over there magging an edge. Luke and Darren are kind of raking the concrete around. And there's the rebar we're putting in the edge. So we'll drop that in. We don't tie it to the wire because we, we like to make sure, we like to just push it down about a couple inches below the surface. That way we know it's not sitting on the lower third of the slab. We like it right up in the, at least in the middle of the slab. Now Darren's shooting another wet pad in there. Give us something to go by. Because the, the board on the Viber Screed is not long enough to go all the way from the form on the left to where we stop screeding. So we need to we need to shrink that space up again. And we do that just by making another wet pad. We'll make as many of them as we need to. And then we're going to finish setting that rebar in that last piece. And then we'll strike that. We call it striking that pad. To give us something to go by for the Viber Screed. So I finally opened up my my private membership site for you guys. You guys that want like a higher learning, more learning. You guys that are starting your own business. You you guys that want more access to me to mentor you to coach you. It's called the Concrete Underground, and that link will be in the description below to sign up for that it's a monthly membership but it's it's a private and we'll have you know q a sessions in there we'll have more private trainings and tutorials and there's a a forum in there a community forum so you can ask questions and we can we can talk more in there about learning how to do concrete running your own business how to do estimates pricing and all that so that's down in the description below to sign up for that guys and that's brand new and I'm only allowing 50 people in at first to see how everything goes. 
see how much time it takes for me. So if you haven't signed up yet, you know, go ahead down there and sign up if that's what you're looking for. If you're looking for more help from me, that's the way to get it. You can see how that Viber screed works. It it really it really smooths the concrete out nice, makes it real easy to bull float. So I'm just shrinking up that edge a little bit so I can reach when I turn this. I'm going to turn it 90 degrees and come down this front edge. And I just want to make sure that I have enough screed board, you know, to reach my, my front edge and then that back edge that I just did. You can see how nice that Viber screed works, especially when you got two guys behind you or two people behind you that really know how to rake the concrete. Then there's no stopping and starting. You're just slowly moving backwards. And they're really doing most of the work. And then once you run that bull float over, you can see Darren's just running that bull float. He's, he's going over it once and maybe twice to get it right where he wants it. Then that's it. That's how easy it is to bull float. You can see we got about a 14 foot screed there. We got a bull float, we got rakes, we got our mags, uh, we got a small chute. All these tools guys are down in the description below if you want to check them out. Now I'm just going to finish off that one bay. And then the garage slab will be poured. We are going to power trowel this smooth. We, we usually power trowel everything and then we'll saw cut some expansion joints in it after we power trowel it. I don't have the power troweling on this video, but I got a lot of other videos about power troweling if you're thinking of learning how to do that. We are going to put some anchor bolts in here for the guy to anchor his sill plate down with. And then he can bolt them down to the slab using those anchor bolts. And we just wet set those, so we'll go around the edge after and push those down in. I had some, I had a, a little video of that on my last one on that shed slab video showing you how we do that. But that's it, guys. I mean, that's how you pour a two-car garage slab. And thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next video.